Today's question is a type of question that you could be giving during an interview for a maths degree or a maths related subject. In this question, x is equal to the square root of 1 plus 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 ellipsis. Now what this ellipsis represents is that this goes on forever. So we've got root 1 plus 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 root 1, plus root 1 forever, infinitely many times. That means there are infinitely many nested square roots. Now what the question wants me to do is to write this expression in the form a plus root b. So an integer plus a third. If you want to have a go with this question, pause it here and off you go. What can we do in this situation? Well, the first thing you might notice is that we can get rid of this massive square root. To get rid of this massive square root, I could square both sides. And if I square both sides, I get x squared is equal to 1 plus. Now, every other square root stays the same. So I've got 1 plus root 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 1 plus and so on infinitely many times. Hang on a second. What do we notice there? What you should notice is that this thing, root 1 plus root 1 plus root 1 plus infinitely many times, is the same as the original expression for x. They are the same thing. Now that's quite weird. You might think, how could it be the case that when I square both sides and I get rid of one of the square roots, I still have the expression that I started with? Well, this is one of the weird things that happens when you have something occurring infinitely many times. Because if I have something occurring infinitely many times and I get rid of one of the square roots, I still have infinitely many square roots. That's just how it is. So it's a bit weird, but it's actually completely mathematically correct. So I get x squared is equal to 1 plus x, because this is x. And now I have a quadratic that I can solve. I bring it over to the other side, x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm going to use the complete and square method, but you could also use a quadratic formula. And bringing it over to the other side, I get x minus a half squared is equal to 5 over 4. Now, I have to be very careful here because when I square root something, I get plus or minus. Which one is it going to be? Well, we'll find out. x minus a half is equal to root 5 over 2 plus or minus. Well, if I had a minus here, let's say I had a minus there. When I bring the half over, I'm going to get x is equal to a half minus root 5 over 2, which is less than 0. Now, if I'm adding positive numbers together, 1 plus root 1 plus root 1 plus root 1 plus root 1, it can't be negative, so it cannot be this. And this happened because I squared both sides, so weird things again happen when you square both sides of an equation, so we must ignore this solution. So it's in fact just the positive one, and if I bring the half over, I get x is equal to a half plus root 5 over 2, which is then equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. That's my final answer. This number is called the golden ratio, and it's very important in both mathematics and in nature.